So Eduardo um, has been working in the area, and I mentioned this right at the very beginning, if you can remember, it was first thing in the morning, Eduardo was working on how do we build uncertainty models with deep learning, machine learning. So in other words, going beyond prediction accuracy to building good uncertainty models represented or sampled by ensemble approaches in deep learning. So Javier, this is awesome. Take it away, please. All right. So hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, my name is Eduardo Maldonado Cruz. My research is focused on flow surrogate and uncertainty modeling. And today I will make a presentation on tuning deep learning models for uncertainty accuracy and precision. The agenda that we will follow today uh, covers the executive summary, the objective, the evaluation of uncertainty models. And then I will present the workflow where I'll show two applications of the uncertainty model goodness metric, followed by the key points and the next steps. First, the executive summary. Uh, deep learning model focus on, on prediction accuracy and minimizing prediction error. But when uncertainty is significant due to limited data veracity, data sparsity, and feature heterogeneity, uh, we, we must replace uh, accuracy is not sufficient for subsurface prediction. So we must expand model validation to consider the entire uncertainty model to ensure that the uncertainty distributions are precise and accurate. Now, we propose a novel and easy to use objective function to summarize uncertainty model performance. The proposed function tunes deep learning models for optimum uncertainty model accuracy and precision. This proposed workflow enables the use of machine learning for any spatial, sparsely sampled settings, including geothermal, hydrocarbon, solar, wind, among other types of problems dealing with uncertainty. Now, the objective. Um, the objective is to tune deep learning models for, ma for maximum model goodness by expanding model validation to consider the entire uncertainty model to ensure uncertainty distributions are precise and accurate. Now, how do we evaluate the, the uncertainty model? Uh, well, first, uh, deep learning models focus on prediction accuracy and minimizing prediction error. But for spatial models, accurate predictions along with accurate and precise uncertainty models is, uh, are critical. Now, when uncertainty is significant, predicting a single estimate must be replaced with a prediction of the entire uncertainty distribution. And this is accomplished robustly with Bayesian neural networks, but with a high computational cost. And so an alternative is to use dropout. And dropout is a technique that addresses overfitting in neural networks and provides an approach to improve prediction accuracy by ensemble learning. Now, these ensembles uh, predictions benefit from reduced model variance and result in a reduced expected error in testing and improved model generalization. The proposed workflow uses the machine learning dropout hyperparameter to calculate uncertainty models of response features by using an objective function to summarize uncertainty model performance. And we call this function uncertainty model goodness. This objective function is based on the goodness metric that is proposed by Perks and Dodge. The goodness of the uncertainty model is presented in equation two. In equation two, uh, the first term here is the uh, typical mean absolute error in testing. And the second term is a measure of goodness. Psi here is an indicator function that, uh, that is measured at each point evaluated over a range of symmetric probability intervals. And now I know it might be hard to visualize how an uncertainty model is evaluated. And because of that, I have prepared figure one here. Now, uh, what can go wrong with our uncertainty model? We can have too low uncertainty, that is too many truth values are outside of our confidence intervals, or we can have too high uncertainty. And to illustrate the process of, of model checking with the goodness metric, uh, we first withheld testing data. In this case, we have five testing data values from which we estimate the uncertainty distributions at the testing data locations. Then. For a set of symmetric probability intervals, these are marked in different colors. Uh, we calculate the proportion of testing data that is in the interval. And this is just a counting process. For example, let's take the probability interval of 80%. Uh, this one is in purple color. And then we count the occurrences. This uh, first testing data point falls within the 80% probability interval. The, se the second testing data point uh, falls within the 80% probability interval. And the same thing goes for number four and five. 
but given, uh, but uh, the point number four does not fall within the 80%. We can see that the testing data point falls within, falls outside of the probability interval. So that's four times out of five and uh, giving us 80% of the cases for the 80% probability interval. So the next thing we do is that we plot the proportion of data in the interval time uh, versus the probability interval, and we repeat for the rest of the symmetric probability intervals. And the name of this plot is an accuracy plot. Now, uh, I have three synthetic accuracy plots for three different uncertainty models. A shows an accurate and precise probabilistic model. B shows a model that is accurate, but is not precise. And C shows a probabilistic model that is not accurate and is not precise. Now uh, I will present the workflow. Uh, this first example, uh, we train a flow surrogate model where we are primarily interested in capturing the spatial uncertainty in subsurface fluid saturation changes for a two-phase displacement problem. Now, using the concepts that I just described for model uh, for checking uncertainty models, uh, we propose the following workflow. First, we define uh, M hyperparameter combinations to evaluate and we use any design of experiments and define the search space. Uh, in figure three here, uh, we show only two hyperparameters, just as an example, so we can plot it in, in, in a space, in 2D space. Um, now, while we search the hyperparameter space, we perform model training uh, using the combination of hyperparameters. Once the model is trained for L ensemble models, we calculate prediction realizations over the testing data to calculate the cumulative distribution function, the indicator function, and we evaluate the precision, the accuracy, and the goodness of the uncertainty model. Figure four here shows the hyperparameter space, and it is colored by the uncertainty model goodness value. The iterative process aims to uh, minimize the uncertainty model goodness metric. A low value of the metric indicates low prediction error and maximum accuracy and precision of the model. As an example, I first select this model that has a high cross validation score in testing, but when we check the accuracy plot, uh, the uncertainty model turns out to be more accurate and more precise. A second model then is sampled, uh, and this second model uh, uh, is again has a high cross validation score. And when we check the accuracy plot, uh, this one shows that the model is in fact accurate and precise. And we sample this this second model based on the value of the uncertainty model goodness that we get. And finally, uh, we return the model with the optimum uncertainty model accuracy and the least overall uncertainty. Uh, the second example, uh, the second application of the uncertainty model goodness is the integration of our metric in the prediction of compressional travel time and shear travel time logs. This data-driven solution uses information from other logs. Uh, in this uh, workflow, I use neutron, deep resistivity, and density logs, but they can be exchanged by any other physical measurement. Uh, we are primarily interested in capturing the uncertainty that is associated with predictions of spatial response features. And similarly, as before, we begin with visualization, signal processing, feature engineering, followed by hyperparameter selection via the sign of experiments. And then this is followed by uh, model training and evaluation using the uncertainty model goodness metric. Figure six is a summary uh, of a comparison of the cross-validation plot for two uncertainty models. The first model uses mean square error uh, for hyperparameter tuning, and the second model uses the uncertainty model goodness metric. Both models have high cross-validation scores in testing data, but, the, uh, but using uncertainty model goodness results in an improved uncertainty model. And we can check this with the accuracy plot for both models. Now, uh, how does this look like for our predictions uh, with respect to depth? Well, on the left, we have the single estimates uh, from a model that is trained with mean square error and, and high model accuracy. And on the right, we have the, uh, we have the uncertainty model trained using the uncertainty model goodness. Now, instead of predicting a single estimate at each depth, we predict the entire uncertainty distribution with accuracy and precision. And now uh, I know that much more can be done with the data, but the presented workflow um, presents the base to evaluate and construct precise and accurate uncertainty models. Now, uh, the key points of this talk. 
Well, first, this proposed workflow enables the use of machine learning for any spatial, sparsely sampled setting. We introduce an objective function called the uncertainty model goodness to summarize uncertainty model performance. And this inclusion allows the calculation of robust uncertainty models from machine learning based ensembles of estimates. And this approach is critical to any prediction problem with significant uncertainty. And the next steps, well, first we are introducing a spatial bootstrap and uncertainty model goodness, and we are working on improvements to the goodness metric. And in addition, we are working on a GitHub repository for broad deployment to support wide use with multiple machine learning models and auto hyperparameter tuning. And well, thank you very much to our sponsors. Eduardo, fantastic, really exciting work. Let me ask, are there anyone with, is there anyone with questions about this work? Let me just make a statement here first though. I think that this will be a major step change in machine learning. I think this is going to be so valuable and so useful to so many applications where we need uncertain models. And as Eduardo said, we need uncertain models every time for what we do in the subsurface or in space. Any questions from anyone? What do you think, Dr. Foster? We put this all together. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, I think I know the answer to my own comment, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be applicable to 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 use uh, for Javier's work as well. Although the the, yeah, the run times for the different realizations might be an issue. Could test it out on some smaller problems. Yeah, I I, I think the only problem that I foresee is the. Uh, the training time and I'm using pretty beefy GPUs already. So the A A100, uh, you cannot get a ton of those uh, per run, but. Yeah, definitely. Uh, in this case, I'm using like a grid search for all the hyperparameters possible, but really you can exchange this grid search by any um, design of experiments to make it uh, much more faster and just evaluate uh, a couple of models that you know, uh, and you can limit as well the search, right? Between hyperparameters that you know, that will give you a uh, high, uh, high model goodness. It's also interesting because uh, sometimes you think your model is performing really, really well. And when you do the accuracy plot, you see that you have zero to none, uh, to no uncertainty, right? In the prediction. So you're completely certain that that's the answer. And sometimes in the subsurface world, but that, that doesn't happen too often. You know, you know what's fascinating, all y'all, is that there's so much integration here because the fundamental workflow to this approach of using a loss function for uncertainty goodness, fundamentally, there is a cross-validation approach. And you remember how this morning, Julian was talking about fair test training. We still have to consider that. It's very interesting. So that'll be part of it, too. What I'm interested in, my hypothesis is, is that when we do this, we're going to find out that we're usually overfit and our uncertainty models are usually too narrow. They're imprecise and inaccurate. I think that's what we found so far, Eduardo. Yeah, totally. We think we know more than we actually do about our problems. <laughs> Most of the time, yeah. <laughs> All right. So this brings us up to a break. We're going to have a break from 2.20 to 2.30. But stick around, we're going to have some exciting talks. Thamer is going to be speaking to us about physics guide at CNNs. Jack is going to be providing us with a really nice demonstration of using data science and data analytics and machine learning for practical problems supplied by one of our consortium members. And I'll finish up at the end.